Let's work through a couple of limiting reactant problems. We're going to use RECA tables here, so this is really good for any kind of stoichiometric application because specifically in the hard ones are the RECA tables with limiting reactant problems, which is the problem if you're given the amount of two reactants, you've got to know which one's limiting and which one is in excess. So we're going to solve all those problems at once. So here's a sample problem. One of the things you can do to prepare nitrogen gas is to run ammonia gas over, over the copper two oxide that you see here. And nitrogen gas comes off. This is a reduction, so the copper metal is formed. So you get that byproduct, and you get water vapor coming off as well. Now, the question is, if you react 18.1 grams of ammonia with 90.4 grams of copper two oxide, how many grams of nitrogen will you get? First, of course, we have to balance the equation. And you can do that with redox balancing, but it's just as easy, I think, to do it by inspection. And you see that you've got two nitrogen atoms on the right, so you need a two in front of the ammonia. And that means you've got uh, six atoms of hydrogen, so that's going to require three oxygens to make the water. Uh, you'll end up with three copper as a result, and there's your three waters. So everything's nice and balanced. Now you find the moles of each reactant from the number of grams up top. And so you divide 18.1 by 17 grams a mole for the ammonia, you get 1.06 moles. And 90.4 grams of the copper two oxide, you divide that by its mole, the mass is 79.5. And, and you get 1.14 moles of the copper two oxide. And ammonia, by the way, is 17.0 grams per mole. It's got three sig digs, so we can move on. Now the problem is a mole-mole problem. If you react 1.06 moles of ammonia with 1.14 of copper two oxide, how many grams of nitrogen will be formed? So here's your balanced chemical equation. And let's use the RECA table method to solve the problem. So here's your reaction on top, and you notice we have the coefficients with them, so we don't lose track of this. The uh, arrow would be right here. So there's no, no nitrogen, copper, or, or water to begin with, and so we start off with only reactant. From the equation, we see that for a one mole of ammonia, we were going to need 1.5 moles of copper two oxide. You can automatically see we don't have enough copper two oxide for all this ammonia. So, for 1.06 moles of ammonia, we need over one and a half moles of copper two oxide. We don't have that much, so what is limiting? Right, it's the copper two oxide. We're gonna get rid of all that in the reaction and have some ammonia left over. The copper two oxide is our limiting. The ammonia is our excess. And to get the copper two oxide, 1.14 moles reacted, we need two-thirds of that. Look at the coefficients in ammonia. So two-thirds of 1.14 is 0.76. And now, of course, 2 to 1, you can divide by 2 to 0.76 and get the change in nitrogen. And, of course, the copper moles are going to be the same as copper two oxide moles and the same as the water moles given off. So now you can use the balanced chemical equation finding the other changes. And here you are, the change here, you're going to be left over with 0 0.30 moles. There's no copper two oxide left over. You've got your 0 0.38 moles of nitrogen. You've got your copper. You've got your water. Now you add these PCs to find the after number of moles, and so we've got that. I always adds to C for each one of these species to get the after numbers. All right, we can then determine what we need to report, whatever we're asked in the problem, in grams by multiplying mole and molar mass. And here we're looking for the nitrogen. 
So we take the 0.38 moles, we multiply by 28.0 grams per mole, and we get 11 grams of nitrogen coming off, and that is what we report. Okay, now if you don't use the RETA table, the problem is if excess ammonia is reacted to 1.14 moles, because we know this is limiting now, how many grams of nitrogen would be formed, and there we simply multiply the 1.14 moles by the 1 to 3, notice 1 to 3 ratio in moles of nitrogen to copper 2 oxide, and we multiply this. You say, well, why didn't we just go right to this? Because the RECA table tells us what's in excess and what's limiting. So 10.6 grams to three significant digits. Now, with or without a RECA table, you have to first determine what you know and what you need to solve for. You have to write a balanced chemical equation. You have to determine how many moles of reactant you have. And starting with each react, either, either the reactant or its moles, find out how many moles of the other reactant you'd need for a complete reaction. Then you'll find out which is in excess and which is limiting. If, if you have too much of something, that's obviously a definition of excess. The other one is the limiting, and you use that in the problem. The RECA table is a more formal and graphical way of doing this, and a lot of visual learners find the RECA table to be exactly right for this purpose. Moreover, it's going to teach you something you will use a lot when you get into se second semester. Here's another example. Barium peroxide will react with an acid, we use hydrochloric here, to form hydrogen peroxide, your old favorite from the medicine cabinet, that will treat wounds. So we ask, what mass of hydrogen peroxide should be formed? If you have 1.5 grams of barium peroxide reacting with 0.68 grams of hydrochloric acid. So, go ahead and solve this problem with or without a RECA table, I suggest with, and check the turn this off and check the answer by moving forward in the video. All right, so we're looking for grams of hydrogen peroxide. We have the balanced chemical equation. So there is the equation here. We start off with 8.86. Notice 8.86. And 18.6. And there's the question. So we're working with millimoles here. 1,500 milligrams right there is 8.86 millimoles. And 680 milligrams of hydrochloric acid divided by 36.5 if you look up these molar masses get 18.6 millimoles of hydrochloric acid. All right, now, the question is, is this working? Oh, well, you need two moles of hydrochloric acid for every mole of barium peroxide. Well, two times 8.86 is 17.7. So we've got more hydrochloric acid than we need, don't we? Well, we're essentially done. The 1 to 1 to 1 ratio here means that the 8.86 millimoles of reactant has produced 8.86 millimoles of the peroxide, hydrogen peroxide and barium chloride. Together, we've got excess hydrochloric acid and the end, let's say this is after, we lose all of the barium peroxide. We lose all but 0.9 millimoles of the hydrochloric acid. And we, we gain the 8.86 in the hydrogen peroxide and the 8.86 in the barium chloride. And we do go to the grams here multiplying by the molar mass, 
34 milligrams per millimole of the hydrogen peroxide, and we get 301 milligrams, or 0 0.301 grams. And that's the answer. Without the Eureka table use, we would go to the same, do the same thing. We don't have the visual that we need. We figure out how many moles of hydrochloric acid are needed, two times the 8.86 on the barium peroxide, 17.7 .7 millimoles, and having also known, known this, we have the 1.1 millimole excess in hydrochloric acid. So the barium peroxide is limiting. We rewrite the equation. What mass of hydrogen peroxide should be more formed from 8.86 millimoles of barium peroxide reacting with the excess hydrochloric acid? Again, you can see that the RECA table is extremely useful because it'll tell us how much excess hydrochloric acid we've got. So you follow those steps with or without a RECA table to solve any limiting reactant problem. In both cases, you've got to find the number of millimoles of reactant of both kinds that you've got. And in both cases, you have to do the math to find out what you in excess. But with the RECA table, you've got a visual, and you can go further with the, uh, with the protocol than you could without using the RECA table.